afternoon and welcome to our crash course in running a successful food hall. I'm Patricia Mejia with GoTab and I'm very excited to be joined here by our honored guests, Susan Ganter and Marcel Temple of The Golden Mill and uh, GoTab CEO and co-founder Tim McLaughlin. Uh, before we get started, I want to take care of a little housekeeping. We're going to keep this really informal, so we won't have any slides today. It's just a 30 minute conversation. Um, you can feel free to ask questions using the Q&A, but we won't be able to answer them on the call. Um, we'll be sure to follow up with you directly after the webinar. So we're just gonna jump right in. And the first question is, I wanna give each of you an opportunity to talk about yourselves. So just give us a little background. Uh, Susan, you wanna get started? Sure, hi everybody. I'm Susan Ganter and I'm one of the uh, co-owners of the Golden Mill. Um, we purchased the Golden Mill. We purchased this old historic feed store back in uh, 2018 and had this crazy idea that we could uh, turn it into a community gathering place without any restaurant experience. So uh, yeah, so that, that, that's that been fun. My background has been in uh, marketing and fundraising. So it, it's come in handy actually in this, in this, in this world of, of uh, food hall business. Very cool. Marcel? Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Marcel. I am the general manager of Golden Mill and have been since uh, last September. Uh, came here from uh, West Bound and Down Brewing Company in Idaho Springs, where I was the general manager there for about five years and um, been in restaurants half my life. Uh, never done food halls before, so I've been uh, enjoying the uh, uh, challenges and learning how we have been able to make this place a success for a year now. Looking forward to, you know, the future. Very cool. And Tim? Um, like Susan, I was actually in technology before this, e-commerce and and, uh, and then I was crazy enough to also start a brewery uh, in Washington, D.C. area. Um, and then, you know, my passion for technology and hospitality kind of came together and started GoTab in 2016. Uh, and I'm very excited to be working with the Golden Mill, Susan and Marcel. Very cool. So let's talk about the Golden Mill. I, I, we'd love to hear about your concept and your licensees. Just give us kind of a lay of the land. Well, sure. Um, as I mentioned in uh, just a few minutes ago, we purchased this building back in 2018. It's located uh, in downtown Golden, Colorado, right on the creek, uh, we have Clear Creek. And um, it's surrounded by uh, the mountains here. And it's absolutely, absolutely beautiful, um, amazing views. And um, when we purchased it, it was a, a, an old feed store and um, we, we really wanted to create something rather than see it getting developed into, into new condos or something, we wanted to see more of a community gathering place. We didn't really know what food halls were all about. We just knew that was, was a trend we were starting to hear about. So we quickly got to doing some research on that and we decided that that was something that uh, we thought Golden would really would really welcome. And so we, we developed this concept uh, with five different food vendors and a self pour wall, which is in the background right here. Um, and uh, that's been a really great thing for us. Um, so we'll get more into kind of how the technology works with GoTab on that. Um, coming you know moving forward but uh but yeah that's how the golden mill came to be we opened up in april in 2021 right before uh right during the covid time and and actually it proved uh people questioned really our sanity <laughs> opening up a community gathering place in the middle of covid but what we found was that people were really actually excited to get back out and you know uh, see their friends and their family and we provide that environment here it's very open we have uh garage doors everywhere. It's a great open space and people felt comfortable coming here. And, and fortunately now things have, have changed and, and uh, you know, for the better. And so uh, we're, we're doing well. well yeah. Did you win the best food hall of 2022 in Colorado or something like that? Yes, we did Westward Magazine, best food hall 2022. So we were very honored to to receive that award, we've we've received a few best best food hall to fuel up after an adventure based on the location that we're in, you know, very close to I seventy into the mountains. Um, we have hiking trails and kayaking and tubing here in the summer and and mountain biking. So it's a it's a very active community here. So yeah, my friend who lives there says that, you know that's the hottest place in town. So uh, I'm excited to visit. Smart friend. Yes. <laughs> 
Very cool. Uh, Marcel, anything to add around the, the concept, the format, the guest experience? Well, I think the uniqueness of our experience here uh, is kind of what draws uh, a lot of people in because it is easy to come in and get your golden milk card um, and use it to use, you know, to access drinks on the on the drink wall um, and then also use that to get food at the at the vendors. So it's very easy to come in and, you know, set yourself up. You kind of you stand in line once and then you, you know, find a table and it's pretty easy to access, you know, a good time. And we're, you know, quickly becoming one of those places where, you know, if you've got friends in town or if you just came here last week and like you've got a new group that you want to go with, like everybody's kind of coming and saying, you got to check this place out. It's so cool because it is a really great experience um, in that you're in control of your own destiny. If you want to have half a beer, that's fine. If you want to have a little wine, you know, if you want to mix up margarita with apple cider, like do your thing. You know, it's 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 very, very fun. And we've been very fortunate to win with the dog crowd because of our patio outside. So a lot of people are coming in with their dogs and, you know, Colorado sunshine is pretty reliable here. So we've been able to, you know, capitalize on, you know, good outdoor space and uh, just really fun and entertaining uh, environment. And it's very family friendly too, which is nice. And it's all from all generations. We get people coming with their young kids, brand new babies to uh, the grandparents. It's multi-generational. We've seen uh, small wedding receptions. People pop in. We have and one large the other ones too. And yeah, ones too, people, you know, show, people up show up with no up reservation. You can. You don't have, <laughs> we don't take reservations. So people just show up yeah. and there's always room. So it, it's really fun. It, it, I think people enjoy that. It's just coming here. You never know what you're, what you're going to find. So it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a really is what makes it so, so community oriented. Yeah. It, it sounds awesome. So you, you mentioned earlier, it's snowing there. Like, so does, does the snow impact your business? I'm on the East coast. So it impacts everything here, but does it impact your business a lot? <laughs> it does. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it, uh, it, it, it can dissuade people from coming out. Um, but one thing we've done is uh, we've added uh, fire pits. We have a rooftop deck that has a seven fire pits on top. We have fire pits down below. We've got heaters outside. You know, we, we try to make it as accommodating for, for people as possible for, for those that want to still be outside who might have their, their dogs with them or whatnot. Um, so, so it still gets pretty busy especially on the weekends. Yeah. People tend to still want to come out and be a part. And in Colorado, when the sun's out, I mean, the sun is out, it's 23 degrees, but if you're sitting there in the sun, it'll feel it's tolerable. like 50, yeah. you know, it, it is very, very tolerable. So. And COVID raised everyone's tolerance levels for True. dining outside. Yeah. <laughs> and we, and we, you know, I think one of our success, you know, uh, points with guests is, you know, it, it during COVID, everybody heard, well, it's, it's booked for like six months or just the, the availability of things became so limited. And so our availability is always open. It's like, yeah, people call me and they're like, I need a reservation. And, I'm, and they'd say, you know, I've got 20 people. I'm like, come on in, no big deal. You know, just, we don't show up. And they, they don't believe me until they show up and they go, oh, it's really easy to <laughs> come in just have a good time. We, so. oh, we also host quite a few community events. We're very community oriented in that respect. So I think this week we've already had a couple of different fundraisers. So uh, to support some of our local nonprofits, we do trivia nights every Tuesday the trivia crowd is they're a pretty hearty crowd they're dedicated yeah. they're dedicated to coming yeah. out yeah <laughs> they, they they come rain or rain snow or shine mm -hmm. um so that also has has been very beneficial just having those consistent events and live music as well we do quite yeah. a bit of live music and so people who are just looking for an opportunity to get out and listen to some some good music they they come find their way here as well so we, we part of the food hall what makes something like this so attractive to people it's it's an entertainment you know as you yes. know the new yeah. term it's always there's something always going on it's your non-traditional restaurant it's not you know kids kids can get up and run around you know so yeah, yeah. Um, there's kids, their parents are comfortable having their children here. It's, it's just people get up, walk around yeah. it's a house party in many ways. So, um, so it's, it's a lot of fun. It sounds like you've created such a great environment, but you probably had to do a lot of flexing and adapting and adjusting. So I want to like move into some of the challenges that you experienced as you've gone through this kind of journey post pandemic and out as things are opening up. So, you know, service challenges, technical challenges, and then maybe think about like the different audiences and how you've overcome them. Is that a good question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, challenges I mean, are all, yeah. uh, it's always, you know. I mean, yeah, the <laughs> easiest challenge would be labor, obviously. You know, I mean, everybody's, everybody's worried about labor. 
Um, you know, how do you keep your staff? Um, how do you run efficiently? Um, how do you train your staff so that, you know, you're activating, you know, uh, you know, all the right elements of hospitality. And in a food hall, of course, like in a place like this, we have a model that doesn't directly translate to people engaging with guests. It's been um, a really great opportunity for us to kind of turn hospitality upside down in a lot of direction because a lot of food halls out there it's you know it's a great experience but it's very you know it's kind of it, it's siloed you know you kind of go here and and this is your experience at that stall and then you go here this is your experience and if you want something it's very common like for for people working at a food stall to say oh if you want that you got to go over there you know and, and we're we're lucky that our space is relatively in food hall world it's a little bit smaller than you know most places um intimate it, yeah definitely an intimate experience but you know um, you know, with, uh, you know, with GoTab, uh, we've been able to save a lot of labor, um, our, you know, ability to open and close checks fast, um, you know, close all checks at the same time at the end of the night, um, you know, with, uh, the KDS screens in the kitchen that we're using that has been able, you know, there's the, the expo and the line cook can be the same person. Um, you know, we've really found out how to streamline our labor. Um, uh, that's been a great challenge for us to overcome. And of course, we're looking forward to saving on labor even more with the use of QR codes at the tables, which we haven't, you know, enabled yet, but I was able to experience the, you know, QR capability when I went to Caboose Commons and, you know, I've seen, you know, I've seen other restaurants that pull off QR codes at the tables with, you know, other systems, but that, you know, I'd say the biggest challenge for us was definitely labor, you know, and we've been able to, we've been lucky in that, you know, because the place is new and because it has a great reputation um, and because of the element of, of excitement and enthusiasm for the guests that are here, it translates to a lot of staff having a good time where they're here too. And so I think that across, you know, across the, you know, the whole, all the pillars of running a great place where you want it, you know, you want it clean, you want it hospitable, you want it fresh, you want it delicious, and you want it to be entertaining. You know, the staff enjoys that and they're stimulated by that. So we've been able to lucky, we've been, we've been lucky. We have a great team. We have a lot of our staff that were here that since it's opened, um, you know, and in restaurant world, you know, that's a long time. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah. and to echo on that too, I would say our, our licensees have also really benefited from, uh, from GoTab's uh, technology. They are able to now predict their hourly sales and, particularly when we come into a little bit of our slower time, which would be the winter season, now they can better project uh, wh what their labor needs to be. And, and for them, that's a huge, huge cost savings. Um, so they, they've voiced that to us numerous times, how much they appreciate the, the ability to be able to, to better project on their, their labors, their labor uh, charge as well. Yeah, you know, I, I just to back up a bit, can you talk to us about what the experience is like, assuming I'm just coming in for a visit, like talk to us about what the experience is like for me as a guest, as a new guest. Yeah, I, I, I actually would add to that, uh, Susan and Marcel, I think since we're all watching it over video, people don't understand the experience of Golden Mill. And one of our employees was just to go and she talked about how great it was for her and her parents. Um I think it's a unique experience operationally, both, I mean, there's, you're not paying everywhere. They're not separate. They are separate businesses, which I think is where people get confused. They think it has to be, they're all one business. Yeah. All, yeah. So I think describing that would be really helpful for, for the viewers. Yeah. I mean, uh, what's unique about the space is you, you uh, talk to the host first when you come in and you tie your credit card to uh, and our, you, you tie your, your credit card to our Golden Mill RFID card, and that becomes a running tab for the whole experience here. And as soon as you say that, people, just, their minds are blown. They're like, wait a minute, I can take this thing and I can go. And of course, you like you give them the easy, you know, um, yeah, there it is. You give them the easy comparison, which is like, it's like Dave and Buster's, except it's food or it's like going to Top Golf, except it's, you know, so it's kind of cool because it becomes like a pass for you to just get whatever you want. And parents love it because they can give it to their kids and say, go get some ice cream, leave me alone, you know, and I'm the, gonna go get a beer. Yeah, I'm going to go get a beer. So it's, it's, again, it just, it just decreases the, the need to go through an interface every single time you want something. It's, it's very, you just tap, pour, and go. And of course, you know, that has its, you know, controls needed on the other side of that, because people will, 
pour too much of a margarita and then they'll be like, why is this $20? And you're like, well, it's, you know, 16 ounces of tequila, you know, but again, you approach that with hospitality. You have these other things that you're not usually, you're, you're used to paying attention to the other side of it on a restaurant where it's like, you know, normally when you come up to a table as a server, you're going to introduce them to things and you'll say, let's just start ordering stuff. And then you can pay at the end, but it's kind of the other way around here where it's like, Hey, this, this is, you're going to pay now in a way. And then we're going to, you're going to go and have a good time. And then you have to remind them that if anything's wrong, come and talk to us because you're so free to just have your own experience that a lot of times they can, you know, um, be out there just going nuts and, and you know, yeah. uh, forget that, that there, you know, there, there are ways to correct problems, but that's been our, our opportunity to solve that. But yes, I mean, that's off topic, but the, uh, the, the um, this, this, this card working, you know, at the wall for them to pour drinks by the ounce is very exciting. And the integration with pour my beer was, you know, um, Huge. Yeah, was really great that yeah. and to you know for, for other challenges you know that we've been able to overcome i will say that like the open-mindedness of go tap to be like yeah we'll integrate with that yeah we'll integrate with that it's like seven shifts you know and restaurant 365 and you know the ability and flexibility of being able to you know bring to bear the you know software that we want to use to manage the back office of our operation i do appreciate that you know you guys have just been like yeah we'll we'll open up our API and call that company and we'll get it figured out. You know, in fact, it's usually them that are like, wait, 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 you know, we, <laughs> you know, you guys are like, we've got everything out for you. So um, one of the two of this card, sorry to interrupt him is just, yeah. just anybody out there from, from a business perspective, you drop this off in the, in the, uh, in the bucket and then you go and you walk out. Yeah. And for, uh, for parents who are, have, you know, kids that are ready to leave or whatever the situation is, that's, been uh we've heard a lot of great things about that as well people are very much appreciative of that so no closing out checks no waiting for your check to come you can just yeah, drop just it in drop and then go. you go so well i will say you guys actually uh were some of the pushers on you know supporting this experience we obviously had the food hall stuff cooking in our product for a long time but with the pour my beer integration and your i think your attention to detail on that experience of no we want it to work like this um, I think that really helped push us to do uh, something more compelling because I think it is all about frictionless. And I guess touching on Marcel's point, uh, I think you basically said no upsells necessary. In fact, you have if you have anything, you have more of it. Like, okay, just remember, you're a kid in a candy Take store, <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and if anything, people spend more because it's just so easy. Um, not that you're trying to get them to, but it is probably a side effect. Yeah, no, that has been a, uh, that has been great to have us request a yeah. special catered experience that we already know we want to provide to the guest and not have to tell, not have to tell our guests that they have to all of a sudden do something differently, you mm -hmm. know, because we can't do that, you know, if we come up with it, the, the agility of that for us to think, you know, moving forward has been really you know, relieving and also inspiring for us to think about, well, okay, now what kind of food hall do we want to run if we didn't have any limits, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's been really great. That's kind of music to our ears. Uh, yeah. Tim, I just to put you on the spot a bit, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of how our tech is transformed to support what their needs are just at a high level? Sure. So I guess we, my background, I own a brewery, right? Breweries used to, my wife does now. Um, and one of the things you see in breweries is it's a common scenario where you've got the brewery and a food truck, right? And those are two separate businesses, right? Two separate companies, two separate payments, two separate orders. And Golden Mill is obviously a macro version of that. You have a beer wall and then five food vendors. Um, and I don't want to have to go buy everything separately, pay separately. If I just get that magic tap and look and enjoy, um, I think that's something we recognized really two years ago and said, boy, wouldn't it be great if I could order a beer and a taco at the same time on a QR code? <laughs> and that really was kind of what drove this sort of like multi-merchant or multi-vendor model because the food truck and the brewery are not the same business and we're not saying they have to be. Um, and that's something that we, as you know, we've been working on for a long time. And then you push this on the RFID stuff. And obviously our goal is to make it however guests want to order, whether it's through a server at a counter, you know, on a mobile POS, on an RFID card or on a QR card. We're like, however you want to get it, 
we want to make that easy. Um, and that's always been our vision. Um, I think the unique thing Patricia is suggesting is like, hey, what is unique? It's it's the fact that there's multiple businesses on one payment, you know, from the consumer. And then ultimately we do all the magic stuff, which I think your accounting team appreciates, or they do a lot less work. Uh, and your vendors get paid daily. I appreciate it a lot because there was a lot of spreadsheets and I still and you know, I I've it's it's it gives me anxiety because I feel like I should be doing more work, you know, to make those spreadsheets work. But no, it's been really uh, relieving to see, you know, and I, uh, the support team has had to repeat themselves and say, yes, that's it's working. You, you there it is right there. You can see the money's going where it needs to go. So yeah, it's 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 taken hours out of my week on accounting and you know. Um, you know, reconciling different, you know, for food hall agreements, you know, whatever food hall arrangement, you know, you might have, it's nice that we could just say, well, this is our percentages and these are how we split the fees and this is what the rent is. And then everything is squared away. That was a relief. That, that's long in the making and I'm glad, glad to hear it working. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. I, you introduced what would be anybody's estimation of really big change to your licensees. Can you talk about them um, and maybe, you know, how they've reacted to it? We've been able to uh, maintain trust. Um, you know, the, uh, the support team that showed up was really thorough in kind of setting clear expectations. The, you know, support team ahead of time with, you know, being available and, you know, Tyler, um, Max and Rot, you know, we're kind of like on video calls with everybody just saying, hey, you know, we're going to, this is, we're going to train you guys on the interface and everything's going to be, you know, ready to go by this date. So, um, you know, that, that was a win for us at, you know, as the, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you know, landlords of the space to be able to promise them that this was going to be an improvement. We're moving forward. We're going to make something work for you guys and, uh, you know, definitely deliver on it. It was, I mean, like all point of sale systems. I mean, I've been through, or it seems like every place I've worked at, I've been through a point of point of sale changeover. Um, for one or the other. And, you know, I, I, I will say from experience that this has been a really good, pleasant experience. It's been able to get from, you know, from, from the hardware side to the software side, it's been able to, you know, we've been able to, like I said, we've been able to maintain trust with the vendors and, you know, they, we had, you know, uh, you know, we have, we have a handful of people that, um, you know, come from all different backgrounds and different expectations and, and needs. Um, and, you know, one of the vendors, I was really worried moving forward about us, you know, kind of losing trust and having to do a lot of FaceTime with them. And, and it wasn't necessary when they saw everything started to work the way it worked. And they were just like, wow, this is really great. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, I my life easier too. That's even better. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's, um, you know, also, you know, to your credit, you guys were owning the mistakes that, you know, inevitably are going to happen. Like whenever we have something that doesn't work the way it, it should, it was like, fix it, you know, we'll get it done. And, you know, things have been resolved in a, in a very respectable amount of time, you know, within days, you know, so I've, I've appreciated that, you know, we, I've had relationships with, you know, um, you know, people that it, you just get, you get silence. So it's nice to, you know, have that support. Yeah. Well, there's more coming that I know about. And we've yeah. talked here. So I, I know we only have a few more minutes left. I, I want to just give you a chance to talk about any great uh, customer or employee stories. Like, so, you know, results that you've gotten, feedback that you've gotten, and even, you know, results to your business. You've already spoken ab about labor and the ease of use, but anything you want to cover there? I think the guests really appreciate the ease of the receipt. Uh, you know, you know, you can get a receipt via text. You can get it you know, just by scanning a QR code. And we haven't even, I've seen the capabilities where you can scan a QR code and start to split the bill. So I'm excited to kind of utilize some of that technology, but um, that has been great, which, and that translates to my staff being a lot more relieved and a lot happier so that they can make the guests, you know, give the guests what they need, you know, with the, you know, technology available. Um, and the, you know, our events team, uh, which is mostly my events manager, you know, Danielle, she's been overjoyed with the, um, you know, just the small capabilities uh, that she's been able to enable with like, you know, setting spending limit, you know, uh, reminders on cards um, and, uh, you itemized know, receipts. Uh, itemized receipts, uh, you know, 
and multiple passes, you know, like the, the you know, party comes in, because when people come in here, the guest, the guest is always going to tell us what they want. And what they've been saying forever is saying, well, we want to have a bunch of different cards for our party. And we weren't able to say that. And now with GoTab, we've been able to say that. And that's made everything so much easier because she's been able to sell parties and people say, I want this. And she says, sure, I can do it for you. So, um, you know, staff and guests. And I mean, for the guests, like we really have had the same experience that we had since we've opened in a lot of ways. Um, it's just been so much easier for the managers and for the staff to pull it off that the overall morale of the team has kind of really shot up because the ease of the job, we've been able to focus on the fun side of our job, which is connecting with guests and, you know, um, making sure that they're not pouring a pitcher of margaritas in a pint glass, you know, stuff like that. So, <laughs> you know, well, seems like a common problem. Yeah, it is. It's that's, well, that's like the one, that's the one, like, Delta is like margarine on tap. You know, it's just been, you know, if anybody's watching this, that's thinking about a cocktail program, I suggest you do it. I just say it's, you know, you throw a lot of hospitality in that direction to make sure that you're, you know, you don't, well, you don't want to leave anybody alone in that situation. Right? <laughs> Long drinks are good. Yeah, yeah, they're good. So any thoughts about the future? I know we've talked about QR ordering. Any, any other thoughts about the future? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, you know, I, one of the things that uh, you know we we were excited about when we first were connected with Tim was just the the ability to to grow to to see how we can grow in the future. Um, you know, GoTab allows us to do that through through QR code ordering, through um, gift card sales. Um, you know, through you know all the different te technology options that you that you have. And so, you know, as a business, you're always looking at ways that you can grow. But we also want to make sure that we're managing the customer experience and making sure that the customer is having a a, a really good experience too. So. Um, you know, this, we feel like GoTab is, is the point of sale of the future and, and we're going to ride that wave together. And we, you know, we look forward to it. The, we come up with different ideas, you know, uh, all the time. And, and we know we can turn to, to Tim and his team and, and say, Hey, can you guys do this? And they'll say, yeah, we can, <laughs> we can, we can make that happen. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, let's figure that out together. No, I, but that's how, you know, we really, we really feel that way. And, um, and that, that's a great, that's a great feeling knowing because it, it, it's just because this food hall business, it's evolving, it's ever changing. It's, it's, it's not going away. And, you know, we want to always stay on the forefront of that. And yeah. so um, we, we feel very confident that we're with the right group, the point of sale group to help us do that. And we love hearing that. I, I'll just give uh, Marcel and Tim any final comments or things you want to add? Well, That's like much, yeah, yeah. Um, we would thank you just for pushing us uh, because it it was a lot of your vision that that helped us clarify like this experience. So um, I think it's awesome. We love we love clients who challenge us to to new levels. So it's awesome. Yeah, we appreciate the partnership. That's definitely Absolutely. the uh, the team. That that was the nice thing about our initial, you know, kind of like meeting is when we did express that we wanted to partner in this, you know, in the success of the business and the success of the guest experience. And I appreciate that you guys are, you know, you're on the same core values on that one. Cause you know, it's obvious if you, if, you know, you own a brewery, you know what it's like, you know, people come in, they need, you know, they're, they're irritated. They're having a bad day. You can make them have the best day of their life. You can turn it upside down. If you just give them a a, you know, hot meal and a cold beer and, you know, and make them feel like they're appreciated. And that's, you know, that's the kind of, that's, that's the side of the business that we want to do. That's the, what we, what we really want to pay attention to. And, you know, so often when you're opening, you get locked down by so many, you know, you know, systemic breakdowns and, and, you know, certain sides of the operation. It's been nice to have this part be a really good, fluid, easy part of day-to-day -day operations. So uh, we appreciate it. Yeah. Well, awesome. I just want to, uh, thank you so much to Susan and Marcel. Thank you for joining us, Tim. We are so grateful for the partnership. Uh, to our webinar guests, if you're interested in learning more about GoTab, you can just go to gotab.com. Uh, we'll customize a demo for you. We'd love to you know, talk to you about GoTab. And I, with that, I'd like to say, have a great afternoon and thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.